Okay, yeah, welcome back. Right, so uh, again, as always, just pretend we're just carrying on straight from the previous lecture. Okay, so just to recap, I'm not going to go over everything we did in the first lecture, but just to um, sort of clarify, the formal reflection model, okay, direct lighting model, doesn't take into account light which pings off and bounces around all objects, it only deals with light which is reflected off a single surface. Okay, it's, it's a simplification, it's required because it would just take too much effort for the computer to be able to deal with a global lighting model for each sort of frame of a computer game. Okay, so the full reflection model is a combination of the three different types of reflection. So you've got ambient, which is just sort of a global up and down, whether you're not everything light or, or everything darker. You've got diffuse, which is reflection off of a dull surface where light is scattered equally in all directions. Um, diffuse reflection also takes into account where the light source is, so it gives you, I know it's not great to see on this screen, but it gives you an idea of light and shadow. Uh, specular, which is purely the shiny bits, okay, so specular you only get the colour of the point light source reflected off of your object, and also attenuation, which is loss of light energy over space. Okay, so if we combine all those, we get the um, if we combine all those, we get the um, form model. Okay, so you can see a bit of shadow, a bit of shiny bit, and that's our form reflection model. Okay, so just go back a slide. Okay, so this is the equation. Okay, lots of variables. One of the reasons why you can do an activity is it just too much really to do. Now this is an equation for a single point. So a single point, if you know what the normal vector is at that point, you can calculate what the reflection model will be. This lecture now, we're going to be looking at shading. So this means each of our polygons in our virtual world is made up of several or lots of points, i.e. pixels. So how do we go from this model, a uh, model for a single point, to the overall um, to illuminate all of the um, pixels in the polygon. Okay, so this is going to be shading. Okay, um, so single forms reflection model provides a model of a single point. To illuminate the whole polygon, we need to look at shading methods, and we're going to be looking at three. There are three main methods. First is called Lambertian shading. Otherwise known as flat. The second one is known as guru shading, and the final one is known as fong shading. Now, fong shading, not to be confused with fong reflection. Same bloke, but one's a shading mo model, one's a reflection model. All three of these use fong reflection. So, in some point, in, in their shading. Now, the first one is the simplest. Okay, so flat shading. Okay, it's so cool because it gives you the appearance of a flat polygon, which is not always uh, the best. Okay, um, and basically, it seems that all pixels in a given polygon are illuminated the same. Okay, no matter where they are in the polygon, they're all illuminated the same. Now, that's kind of a yeah, this is, it's a shame that this projection doesn't seem to be the best. Okay, what I've done here is I've created a, a graph of what was called the peaks function. Now, peaks is just an undulating, um, undulating function which MATLAB uses to show up its 3D graphing capabilities. Okay, so here's a peaks function. And what I've done is I've used 25 by 25 polygons to, um, to represent this peaks function. And I put in a light source somewhere over here on the right, and I've asked MATLAB to work out what the shading should be. Now, from here, well, hopefully it's clear. It's probably better if you to look at this through Moodle. Um, you can easily tell where each polygon is. 
Okay, you can easily tell where the the the, um, the border between each polygon, and it kind of gives you an unrealistic representation. What we want is for this to be a nice, smooth sort of looking surface. But here we can clearly see, for example, this one here. I can clearly make out the edge of that polygon. So it's a fairly poor representation. It's necessary. Um, and back in the day, in the early days of sort of 3D graphics, this is what we had to do. And maybe in a minute I'm going to show you a, a YouTube video which, uh, made in the 80s which, which shows flat shading in action. Okay, so the, the main disadvantage, it's very, very quick to do. You don't really have to do much. But we can easily tell the outline. Now, why can we easily tell the outline? This is quite... Um, what I've got here is a, a rectangle. Now, on the far left, I've shaded the rectangle in 100% black. And in the far right, I've shaded the rectangle 100% white. If you don't believe me, I can show you the code for producing this rectangle. And what I've done is, starting about there, I've got a gradual shade, uh, gradual decreasing in terms of the blackness to, to the white. Now this is a um, image which um, is a good example of what we call Mac banding. Now anybody notice something a bit weird about this? Yeah, bearing in mind this is meant to be 100% black, this is meant to be 100% white. Anybody sort of look at that image and see something a bit odd? In the middle of it? But well, just the bits are shaded. You yeah. know, that third pure black, that third pure white, yeah, just the middle. But the middle bit goes from black to white, so yeah. you don't. I, I think this should be like gradual all the way towards the end. Oh, it should. If it was, it wouldn't. What I've done is I, I haven't got it all the way to the end because I wanted to highlight something. Um, think of either, uh, well, actually, I'll, I'll tell you what, it's kind of like a. Um, optical illusion. What I want you to do is have a look at about, for me it's about there. Does that, if I was to draw a vertical line, does that look slightly whiter and the bit to the right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is 100% white. To me, when I look there, it looks lighter. Yeah. And around about, yeah, it's slightly higher at the dark bit. Ooh. Around about there for me, it's slightly darker. I don't know, it may be different. It's yeah. easier to see on a... Okay, but the white, the white one's actually the easiest. Around about there. Now, promise me when I believe it, that is no whiter than that. Okay, but it looks whiter. The reason being is we're all animals. Think of evolution, all right? Back in our ancestors, I don't know what type of primates or what have you, way back millions of years ago. Well, actually, think, think of a sort of, I don't know, Stone Age man sees a tiger, wants to run away from the tiger. Okay, so being able to see something is quite an important survival. You know, if you're being hunted by a predator, being able to see the predator is quite important. Likewise, it's quite important to see something to eat. Okay, so our use of animals are very good at making outlines of things. Now this is what we call map bounding, and it's because we're all animals. Okay. And that's what kind of like this sort of optical illusion type phenomenon is. This is what you, this is the actual brightness, this black line. Okay, so this is all light, then goes dark, then all dark. But the red line is kind of what we actually tell. And the reason being is because we're very good at detecting outlines. And that's the reason why the flat shading is rubbish. It looks to us, rubbish to us because it's very easy to tell the difference between two very, very subtle changes in lighting. Okay, so, okay, so that's flat shading, and because of map banding, it looks a bit rubbish. Okay. So, one solution <coughs> is to use more polygons. So what I've got here is I've got the same peak function, but instead of 25 by 25 polygons, I've got 400 by 400. Uh, sort of a bit of a a sort of uh, brute force and ignorance approach to solving this problem is just throw more polygons at it. And this is what we're sort of aiming at. So it's kind of look, looks like a bit plasticky, but you can't tell 
where each one of them is. Unfortunately, we can't do that because it's just far too computationally computation expensive. If we keep rendering objects with more and more polygons, it's more and more work, more and more memory. So we can't do that. So we need to find a more intelligent way around the problem. Okay, and in the mid 90s, maybe, well, probably long before, but around about the mid 90s, computer games and virtual worlds started to take advantage of what we call Goro chaining. Now, what this does is for each of your <coughs> vertices of any polygon, so for example, the simplest polygon is a triangle. So, at the three vertices of a triangle, we calculate what Bond's reflection model should be. Okay, um, so remember, Fong's reflection model requires a normal vector, and so for each vertex of, of a polygon, what you do is you average the normal vectors so each polygon would share the same vertex. So for example, if you had a pyramid, the top point of your pyramid is shared by four, um, four separate polygons, if you average the normal vector for each of those four polygons, you'll get an approximation of the normal at that point. Okay, so the normal vectors at the vertices is calculated by averaging all those polygons that share that vertex. So once you've got the Fong reflection model calculated for each vertex, what you do is you interpolate along the edges. So for example, remember the scan line method from filling. Okay, so you have a horizontal scan line. What we do is we interpolate between the top point, uh, P3 in this case, and P1. And so we've got an intensity of lighting at this point, we have an intensity of lighting at this point, and somewhere in between, let's say A, we interpolate between those two. Similar for B, so we interpolate between P3 and P2, the intensity of that um, form reflection model. So at A and B, you'll have some intensity for your pixels, and then all you do is to find the intensity at pixel C, you interpolate between A and B. And this is an example of Guru shading. Okay, so I'm going to look at a couple of equations. If I A is the intensity at the left scan extrema, I B is the intensity at the right scan extrema. Now remember we go down in rows of pixels, so the next row down, the intensity on the left-hand pixel will be whatever the one above it is minus delta IA, and delta IA is given there. So this is just a, a ratio, um, the ratio between on the left-hand side and delta IB is a ratio to the right-hand side. Okay, so just a straightforward linear interpolation between those points. Across the centre, C, if we know what that uh, um, illumination is. So all we do to find the one to the right is add delta IC and that's between those two there. Okay, so very, very, it's basically using a scan line filling method but for intensities. Okay, and this is, um, again in MATLAB, it looks a bit dull there, it's uh, not coming out at the best. This is the same peaks function, 25 by 25 polygons, but this time using Guru's <coughs> Now, it's not looking great on this projector and it doesn't look great on your black and white printed notes. If you look at this on a, on a computer screen, okay, you'll notice it looks a lot smoother. It's a lot smoother than the flat shading. It's the same number of polygons, I haven't changed the number of polygons, I've just changed the shading number. Okay, and this is, represents a big improvement over the flat shading. Sorry, does a bit, yeah. It, well, ah, why do you think? It, what do you mean by rubbery? Why why it's, it's, like more shiny or it's more or less. I think it's less shiny. So if if I show you this one, <coughs> this is what you should really get. That one, and this is what we got. So it looks duller, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, you're right, it looks rubbery. So the Guru shading, it, it, it reduces the um, specular shininess of it. So all those specular sort of white parts, it's reduced them down. 
Why do you think that is? Can you sort of hazard a guess? So there's less of a difference in colour, is it? So. Not less of a difference. So what we have here is we reduced the shininess. Okay. Now the reason bit why is if I go back to the slide here, we only use Fong's reflection model at the corners, and then the information at the corners is then interpolated across the middle. If the shininess at the corners is low. That means everything we interpolate across the middle is also going to be low. So let's say you had a big polygon, and in the middle it should be really shiny, but at the outside it's not shiny. You're going to lose that shininess. And this is something, um, this is probably way before your time, but there was a game called Descent uh, in the mid 90s. And it had, um, it used guru shading, but what it had is when a light source got close to a polygon, suddenly the, um, the polygon would lose all lighting on it because when the light source was close to the center at the edges or at the corners there was hardly any light there because it was dead close to the center and it was further away by attenuation so what happened is it suddenly the lights turned out as soon as it went close to a, to a wall it's not really a bug but it just showed the limitations of the um, technology at the time Okay, so that's a good um, that's a good observation. It looks rubbery. So the shininess, so this, these white bits should be whiter. It should be more shiny. Also, if you look carefully, and it's not easy to see on this one, but you'll see sort of lines of light. <coughs> uh, it's, I don't know whether you can see that there, but there's kind of like you can see the edge of the polygon going up the way there. Okay, and that's a deficiency of the. Um, it's a deficiency of the, the method, really. So it's, it's a solution, but it's not ideal. OK, so that's, we've got flat shaded, pretty rubbish. We've got bong uh, sorry, guru shading, which is a big improvement, but it's still not ideal. OK, so this brings us on to fong shading. And what fong shading does is instead of interpolating the intensities at the corners, at the vertices, it interpolates the normal vectors. Okay, so if you calculate a normal vector at each corner, at each vertex, interpolate all of those normal vectors across the polygon in the same way as we did with Goro, but also the intensities, and then, you, then you've got a normal vector for each pixel. Okay, so imagine lots and lots of each pixel in a polygon has a separate normal vector. And then all you do is use rock bond reflection model at, by a pixel by pixel basis. So it is more computationally uh, expensive than Goro chain, which you're having to calculate that, that big long equation for each pixel. Okay. Um, Right, so here's a, um, a diagram, here's the, uh, uh, the same polygon here, but instead of calculating the intensities at P1, P2, P3, we calculate the normal vectors, and that's just averaging the polygons which share a vertex, and then we interpolate the normals down the left and right hand side. Now interpolating a vector is the same as interpolating a scalar. The interpolation equation is exactly the same. So in this case, the one on the left hand side, NA, all we're doing is subtracting delta NA from the previous value. And delta NA is it, it, itself a vector. So we interpolate down the left hand side to give us NA, we interpolate down the right hand side to give us NB, and then we interpolate across the scan scan line to give us NC. So once we've done all that, every pixel in our polygon will have a separate uh, normal vector. And then we can apply Fong's reflection model to each pixel. And that's what you get. So this is the same 25 by 25 
same peak function. But this one looks a lot closer to the 400 by 400 polygon one. And you can see, compared to the Guru one, we've got lots of sort of shiny bits, lots of speculative parts here, and it looks a lot um, shinier than the Guru um, method, which did look a bit sort of rubbery. Okay, so it's a lot more efficient. And as I mentioned briefly a couple of weeks ago when we did shading, font shading can actually be done using texture maps. So you can get a font, what we call a font map, and texture map it onto your um, polygon. So whereas I said this is sort of in theoretically how it's done, in practice we can actually have a texture map of normal vectors rather than um, interpolated. Okay, so I've, uh, here's the teapot. This is the flat uh, teapot shaded. That's gurud, looking a bit sort of rubbery, and foam looks a bit better. That's a lot. I'm just going to show you a, an animation. Okay. So let me run this. So what I've done here is I've created a 3D um, sphere, uh, and this is um, rendered using flat shading. All I've done is I've taken the light source and taken it around. So you can clearly see we have, you know, you can clearly see where each um, polygon ends. So that was using flat shading. Right. And if I do similar, res. And I could use Guru as well. Uh, it's a bit slower, you can see. You can also start to see, well, it's very slow, but you, you can actually sit, almost tell where each um, polygon begins and ends because of the um, white. Sorry? Uh, no, yeah, yeah, you can see the outline is a bit jaggy. Okay. Now, one thing that was interesting, I wrote this program this morning, and I was about to say, okay. Okay, yeah, this morning I wrote this program, and I was going to do the phone as well. But for some reason, I don't know whether MATLAB has not been paying their bills or something. Uh, where, what's going on here? For some reason, Fong just doesn't exist there anymore. I don't know what. Uh, where's Matt? Yeah. So if you look at the, this is a code. This is actually a um, assignment which I had quite a few a few years ago in this course. I actually had this as an assignment, but I thought it was too easy, so got rid of it. Okay. No. no? Anyway, you see there, the, there is a command called lighting Fong. It would work, and I, th and I, I went on forums and the why not this work? This is working. Apparently, they have, you know, it's um, they removed it from MATLAB. Don't know why. Yeah. Anyway, so this is the MATLAB commands. If you're interested in um, X sphere, just generates the sphere coordinates. Theta zero to ten to one. That's four times three sixty. So this theta is the angle. Of the light source around the sphere. Uh, so the surf just that, that plots the sphere. Light angle that sets the angle. Okay, I've had a shiny material shiny, which is the that's one of the defaults. You could have dull or metal or something. And then all you do is say, okay, I want it flat lighting, and then uh, it will render it. Okay, so all of that is already uh, installed in Batman. You know. Right. 